Hey, LifePoint family, thanks for joining us here on our YouTube channel. Before we dive into today's message, Tammy and I want to take a moment to share with you about an upcoming opportunity that we engage in together every year as a church, and that is our year-end offering. In this season of generosity and reflection, we are intentional about responding to God with gratitude while sowing a seed of faith into the future. And we do this through our annual offering. It's over and above our regular giving. We bring a gift of sacrifice. You know, in this series forward, our faith will be stirred as we are reminded that God has not called us to retreat in the face of challenges, but to press forward in the power of His strength. This is a time to invest in the coming year as we believe God to do more than we could ask or imagine as he builds his church through our partnership. What a privilege. That's right, and now more than ever, people need the hope of Jesus. And so however you share in this church family, whether you attend in person or you engage online, we invite you to prayerfully participate. Whether through a one-time gift or a recurring gift, we're eternally grateful as we bring the message of Jesus to a hurting world, locally, nationally, and globally. You know, to find out how you can contribute, go to lifepoint.org forward. Thank you in advance for your prayerful partnership as we advance the mission together. We love you and cannot wait to see all that God does in and through you. We hope you enjoy today's message. Amen. So glad you're in church today. I'm excited to continue this series called Forward. And uh, if you've missed it, I'll kind of tell you the journey we've been on. We've been talking about how life moves at the speed of your faith. Um, that, that really the steps of faith, to have faith we talked about in week one, you've got to actually move. You've got to actually, you gotta actually do something. Faith isn't a feeling. Faith isn't the intellectual assent to something or the intellectual understanding of something. Faith is when you make movement. We talked about Hebrews 11, that by faith, and then it would describe the action that these great men and women of, men and women of faith took. And, and so faith is about action. So your life is moving, moving at the speed of your faith. Your life is moving, it's advancing at the speed of your faith. And so we're talking about this around this idea of generosity as we head into year in giving, but it applies to every area of your life. And, and so week one, I talked about three different levels of giving. I know so many of you have, you've moved from spontaneous to strategic and you're gonna take that step. Maybe even some of you today, you're taking the step of tithing of going, God, no, I'm gonna predetermine it. I'm not waiting till an emotion. I'm not waiting till a slick video. I'm predetermined. I'm gonna be a giver. I'm gonna be a generous person. And I couldn't be more proud of you. Some of you, you're, you're asking God, what should I do? You're gonna take that next step to sacrificial giving. God, how, what does that look like in my life? And I believe God will speak to you on that. Last week we talked about with Pastor Chris, what an amazing word talked about the motivation for giving, that the motivation isn't because there's needs all around the world and there are plenty of needs. And that's not a bad motivation, but it's not the highest motivation. The highest motivation is eternity. It's that you're going to stand before God. I'm going to stand before God and we're going to give an account for what we did with what he gave us. And so one day we're gonna, we're gonna have to tell God, here's what I did with what you gave, what you gave me, God. I, I got a lot of coffee with it, <laughs> or, or I, I don't think God's bothered by that. But, but at the end of the day, we made a difference with it. We, we had an eternal impact and you're designed for that. This week, I wanna talk to you about this. I wanna talk to you about, as you pray about what would God have you do on December the 11th, how do I know it's God? How do I hear and how do I discern the voice of God? I think most of us would say, we want to follow God's will, but it's how do I know it's God? How do I discern his voice? How do I, how do I know it's not just the pizza I ate the night before or, or I'm just kind of wrapped up in the moment? How do I know God is speaking to me? And so I want to talk to you about that. I think it'd be helpful if you're a note taker, give you some things to write down today. If you're not a note taker, I'm going to give you some things to right down today. Okay. So uh, this week, Abigail, our, our child number three, the six-year-old uh, just had a birthday last month, is six now. And, uh, and this really works to my advantage because at breakfast, when they don't want to finish it, I can go, you're six, take six more bites. <laughs> so the, anyways, just a little parent trick for you there. So um, she had a school assembly, um, had a chapel service at her school and this past week, and we went to it. 
And um, one of the teachers got up and they have this thing that when a teacher gets up or the principal gets up, they say, good morning, boys and girls. And it was, uh, I think, kindergarten through second grade in this room. So there were several hundred of them in the room and, uh, and they were all, you know, sitting in their seats and, and they would say, good morning, boys and girls. And so the kids back, they say, good morning, whatever. And so the, the teacher that got up was Mr. Henderson. So all the kids, they said, good morning, boys and girls. And so all the kids in unison, like all these little, like, you know how it is, these little high pitch, like tiny little voices, right? They're so cute. It's like, good morning, mister. And they love it. So they yell it and, and all these little voices say it. But here's what was amazing to me. And it so struck out to me is I could hear Abigail. Out of all those voices, I knew my little girl's voice. Like I, I could hear the tone, the intonation, the pitch. Like I knew that that voice, out of all those hundred little voices that were going, good morning, mister. And they, it's, like they, it's like someone's directing them. It's amazing. It's like, good morning, Mr. Henderson. Out of all those voices, I knew her voice. And here's what I know about your life is that there are hundreds of voices that are clamoring for your attention. There are a hundred little voices that every day, all day are, are trying to speak and get your voice and it's on your phone and it's at your job and it's in your school and, and it's all around you and it's the narrative that's playing inside your mind. And all around us, there are hundreds of voices that are wanting your attention and they're wanting you to make decisions and they're wanting you to move on their voice. And here's what I want to tell you today is that you can have the kind of understanding and you can have the kind of relationship with God where in the middle of all those voices, you go, no, that's God's voice. Yeah. Out of all the voices that are clamoring for your attention, you can go, no, I know my father's voice. Just like I know my daughter's voice, just like I know how she talks and how she articulates and how she's going to say the syllable and the, the intonation and the tone of her voice, I'm telling you, you can go, no, that's not the voice of my father. No, that's the voice of the enemy. No, that's the voice of my flesh. No, oh, but that one, out of all the noise, out of the crowd, that's the voice of my father. And that's what I want for you in every area of your life. And as we move towards this forward year-end offering on December the 11th. This is what I really want for you. I don't want you to come on the 11th and just kind of like, well, I'll do something. No, 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 no. There's no spiritual growth in that. There's no advancing at the speed of faith in that. There's no deepening roots in that. This isn't a financial exercise. This is a faith exercise. And here's how you're going to have that faith exercise is you're going to hear the voice of the Father and then by faith respond to it. And so if that's the point, then how do I know it's God? The Bible says this in John chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. It says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep. Obviously, this was a, a culture that there were a lot of shepherds and sheep and um, and so they would understand this metaphor, but it says the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own, he goes ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they what? They know his, everybody shout it with me. They know his, voice. they know his voice. I want to know, do you know the voice of God? It goes on to say, but they will never follow a stranger. And this was true about sheep. They, they, they so got to know their shepherd, they wouldn't follow the voice of another shepherd. In fact, they'll run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. This metaphor that John is giving here that Jesus is using is this, is he is the good shepherd. And he wants you to know him so well that when he speaks, you go, no, I know that voice. Oh, I know, I know that voice, and I want to follow that voice, but the voice of a stranger, I'm not going to follow. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Let me show it to you again. John chapter, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says this, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. In other words, everything that you feel and everything that you think isn't of God, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. How do I test them? That's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to go. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm feeling. How do I know it's God? 
And this may not just be a decision on your your year-end giving, but how do I know that I'm supposed to take this job? Because how many of you know, like, it would be awesome if everything in the Bible was like, you know, first opinions, chapter two, yes, date her. Thank you, G. Like, yes, take that promotion. Yes, move to that city. Yes. But how many of you know that a lot of decisions in our life isn't like, I got a chapter and verse for that. A lot of our decisions in life are not like God gave me a neon sign. I've prayed for neon signs. I can't tell you how many times. He has not made one yet. I don't know that he, I don't know if he's against neon or what, but like just doesn't give it to me. So how do I test the spirits? How do I test this? I'm going to show you that today. Proverbs 14, 12. I just want to show you this one more time. It says, there's a way that appears right, but in the end it leads to death. So how do I know? Like, how do I know? In the Old Testament, God said, I put before you blessing and cursing. Today, I, I, I encourage you to choose blessing. Well, how do I know? How do I know? They both look good. How many of you know that's the hardest ones? Like, good and evil. I, I don't, we're not talking about that today. Like, choose the right or choose the wrong. Okay, God, we all kind of know that. But what, 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 what about when it's good and good? How do I know which one is gooder? <laughs> as they would say in Tennessee where I grew up. Like, how do I know which one is the better? I am educated. How do I know which one is the better of the two options? And so I want to give you five thoughts on that. Let me give you some real, real practical handlebars. So if you're a note taker, write these down. If not, write them down. If you're with me, shout amen. amen. All right, number one is this, is does it line up with the Bible? All right, so our starting point is this. Has the scriptures spoken to the subject? Have they given us direct information on the subject? There are some things that are like, where do I go to college? Well, the Bible doesn't necessarily tell me that, but there are a whole lot of things in our life as a starting point that the scriptures have already spoken to. The Bible says this in Psalms 19, the law of the Lord, it gives us several like things about the, the word of God. I love this. The law of the Lord is perfect. So it's without error. So I can trust it. So I, I, that's going to be my foundation. I'm going to go to that first. What does it do? It refreshes my soul. So if I'll go to the Bible first and make decisions and steps that I'm taking in my life based on what the scriptures told me, then it's perfect. I, I can trust it. I don't have to worry. Is it going to lead me astray or not? But not only that, it's going to refresh my soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. They're going to make me wise. Come on. How many of you need some wisdom? Oh, I said, how many of you need some wisdom in the house today? Well, I'm going to find it because the word of God is trustworthy. It makes wise the simple, the precepts of the Lord. So here's what it's saying. The Bible may not speak specifically to what you're dealing with, but it may offer you a principle that gives you guardrails. Let me say that again. The Bible may not give you a specific, go to that school, date that person, take that job, buy that house. Are you with me? But it may give you a precept. It may give you a principle. It may give you a parameter to go, okay, okay, I'm feeling, I get this. This is the guardrails. So here's the deal. On December the 11th, the Bible doesn't give you a number. Are you following me? It doesn't tell you what your gift should bring, but it offers you some precepts. That the tithe belongs to God, it's holy to God, and we're to return it the first to him. Okay, well, that's black and white. It tells me that, that sacrifice is something that causes me to exercise faith, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Okay, there's a guardrail. I'm starting to get some principles. Are y'all with me? I'm starting to get some precepts that begin to paint a picture for me or begin to lay a pathway for me that I can begin to walk, and in conjunction with the Holy Spirit, in, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, I can go, okay, God's Word's given me some guardrails. Now, Holy Spirit, speak to me, and I'm going to make the best decision that I possibly can. And so the precepts of the Lord are right, what? Giving joy to the heart. So this is what the word of God does. It refreshes my soul. It makes wise the simple. It gives joy to my heart. It goes on to say the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Man, if you've ever been like, I just don't know what to do. I feel like I, feel like I can't see in front of me. I don't, I don't know the next step. Well, guess what? The commands of the Lord give light to the eyes. And the fear of of the Lord is pure. This isn't like a, I'm afraid of God. This is, I'm, God, I'm going to reverence your word so much. I'm going to honor your word that I'm going to follow your word. 
It's the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. I love what Luke said. He wrote, although heaven and earth shall pass away, my words remain forever true. And so I'm making a decision what I'm going to do. First step, God, I want to hear from you. Well, God goes, okay, let's start at what I've already revealed to you, and it's in the written word of God. Are you all with me? That's going to be my starting point. I'm not going to start with other people. We'll talk about that. I'm not going to start with what am I feeling. I'm going to start with, all right, has God specifically spoken to it in his word, or has he given me a principle or a precept that give me the guardrails in his word that'll get me on the journey of walking by faith? Everybody say amen if you got it. All right, number two is this, will it make me more like Christ? I can go ahead and tell you, God is not going to lead you down a path that doesn't make you more like him. Because his end goal is not your comfort, it's your conformity to the image of his son. All right, so Philippians chapter 2 says this. It says, in your lives you must think and act like Christ Jesus. He's trying, this is what Christians are. They first called us Christians in Antioch, meaning little Christ. So God's whole purpose for you is to make you more and more like Jesus. And so he's going to lead you in steps of faith that make you more like Christ. So what is the character and nature of Jesus? He's forgiving. He's loving. He's generous. He's compassionate. He's empathetic. So is this decision going to make me more like Christ? going to make me less like Christ? If it's going to make me less like Christ, this isn't God. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians 5, it says this. It says, we take every, or, or chapter 10, verse 5, we take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. What is he saying? I have a thought that comes to my head. I have a feeling. I have a sense. I have a desire. None of that is bad. I'm not saying that's evil. That's kind of how I think God begins. There's like this, man, I feel this tug, this pulling, this, this and, and we go, okay, I'm going to bring that, and I'm going to bring it to the Word of God and go, okay, it doesn't contradict God's word, and I got some principles that help me. So my next step is I'm going to bring it obedient to Christ. Does it make me more like Jesus? Are you all with me? James chapter 3. I know I'm giving you a lot of word, but I want you to get this. James chapter 3 says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit. It, it's also impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And so, so there's, a, there's a wisdom of this world, but then there's a wisdom of God. And so this wisdom of God is pure and it's peace-loving. And, and so if this is leading you into chaos, if this decision is, is leading you into broken relationships, it, it's probably not of God because it's not making you more like Jesus. He's a reconciler. He's a restorer. He's a redeemer. It, are you all with me today? And so I'm just, I'm just going step by step. Okay, I don't know exactly what to do here. I don't know exactly what God is asking me to do here, but does it make me more like Jesus? And so it's a good filter. So when I feel this nudging, I feel this stirring. Years ago, I, I had a relationship that I just felt like wasn't right. And the person didn't even live near me anymore. But I just had this nudging. I was like, I think I need to have the conversation. I think there's some offense. I think there's something that's rubbing there. And so I called the person up, and that we were going to happen to be near each other. And I said, well, let's meet up. And so we met up, and we had. And before I went, I was like, I don't know that I want to have this conversation. But I knew restoring and moving any barrier would make me more like Jesus. So it obviously wasn't bad pizza. Come on, y'all with me? It was obviously the Spirit of God wanting to make me more like Christ. Are y'all with me? So you got to ask the question. It may not be easy. You may not want to. You may not feel it. Does it make me more like Jesus? Number three is, does godly counsel agree? Hey, right here, look me in the eyes. Godly counsel. Come on, look at, look at me again. <laughs> Not Facebook counsel. 
Not polling your friends. Does godly, like they have a track record of exhibiting the fruit of the spirit in their life. Like they have a track record of good decisions. Are y'all with me? Like I'm not going to financial counsel from my broke friend. Come on, somebody. Is this too much for you? Like, does godly counsel agree? The Bible says this in Proverbs. It says, the way of fools seems right to them. Come on, a fool's like, we living it up. Yo, this is awesome. No, but the wise listen to what? Everybody say it with me. They listen to advice. The wise listen to advice. And so I've gone to the word of God. And if it clearly speaks about it, I don't have to do anything else I'm telling you. But if it's like, well, the word of God didn't, doesn't tell me exactly what I should do on this one. But I got some principles. I got some precepts. I've checked box number two. Yes, this will definitely make me more like Christ. It's going to stretch me. It's going to put me outside of my comfort zone. It's, gonna, I don't, it's not going to feel great, but it's going to make me more like Jesus. That's for sure. Okay, number three. Now, I'm going to go submit this to somebody. I'm going to go to my small group leader. I'm going to go to my campus pastor. I'm going to go to somebody on my t- I'm going to go to someone in my life that, that loves God. And you're like, well, I don't have anybody. Well, get in a small group, everybody. Get on a team where you can get in relationship with people. Go up to somebody on your staff team. I'm going to go and go, hey, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I feel like God is saying. What do you think about it? I rarely make a decision in my life without submitting it to my pastor, who you heard last week to godly friends in my life. Thankfully, the, the team, the staff team, that's, I got people around me that, that walk with Jesus and love God and love me. Are you all with me? Because yeah. the way of a fool seems right to them. They're living it up. This is awesome. No, but a wise person goes, no, I'm going to ask for advice. I'm going to seek some counsel. I'm not just going to ask for it. I'm going to listen Come on, how many of you ever asked for advice and already made up in your mind what you're going to do? You've already made the decision. I'm like, why are you even asking me? I love it when people come to me and be like, Pastor, God's told me to blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why are you, like, you pulled the God card. Like, what do I have to add to that? No, God didn't. I don't, I mean, like, no, asking advice is go, I'm thinking this, I'm sensing this. What do you think? Think I should make the decision? I haven't made it yet. No, I'm listening to godly counsel. Now I'm listening to godly counsel. I love what Proverbs 19 says. It says, listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you'll be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Prevails. I can't say the word. Listen to advice and accept discipline. So not only listen to it, but I'm going to accept it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to factor it in. I'm going to have enough humility to go, okay. Now, here's what I understand. I was thinking about this. For some of you, it may be like, all right, I'm praying through what my giving should be, but I don't know that I want to go talk to anybody about that, and I understand that. I don't, this one area I don't really talk to people about unless it's something major, like um, the year Tammy and I felt led to sell our house and, and give all of our equity to the church. I sought some counsel on that one. Um, and I think you should. But I think at least within your, your unit, if you're a husband and wife, you should be talking about it together. Yeah. Shouldn't be a one, you should be going, no, let's, let's pray through this and come to agreement together. If you're not married, maybe you got a really trusted friend and, and you kind of give, hey, I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about doing something that's going to be real sacrificial. It's going to cost me this. I'm going to have to say no to this, to say yes to giving. I think you can find a way to seek some counsel with maybe not divulging in that area something that would be a very private thing between you and God. Are you with me? Say amen. Amen. Proverbs 24. Let me give you one more verse on this. It says this. Surely you need guidance to wage war and victory is won through many advisors. Just kind of giving you this precept, this principle, this, okay, God, he's not telling me do this, do that. In his word, I don't, I don't have specific direction for my life plan, but, man, you do have some precepts. What does the word of God say? Is it going to make me more like Christ? What does godly counsel say to me? Number four, write this down. And this one 
is, is subjective, I understand, but, but write it down. Number four is, do I have peace? Do I sense, I, and, and this isn't where I start. These are in chronological order. I don't, I don't kind of pick and choose. These are chronological order. This is, just, this is over the years. I've been walking with Jesus now um, for a long, long time, for decades. And, and as I've grown in my journey, how do I hear the voice of God? I've had to make so many decisions that, that affect my life and my family and, and our church and people. And so how do I make these decisions? I start with the word of God. Will it make me more like Christ? I seek godly counsel. And after that, then I evaluate, do I have the peace of God? Do I have the peace of God? 1 Corinthians 14 says this, For God is not the author of confusion, but of, everybody say it with me, but of, he's the author of peace. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition. So I'm bringing this to God. I'm in conversation with God. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. So God's going to get, and then when I do that, here's what God's going to do. The peace of God, which transcends understanding. I love that idea. It transcends understanding. So, so it may not make sense logically, but I can have peace supernaturally. I want you to hear that. It may not make sense logically, but I can have peace supernaturally because I have a peace that transcends understanding, will guard my heart in Christ. Now, now I, I want to talk this about you because many of us, we go, we don't take a step of faith because we go, I don't have peace about it. But it's not peace we're, a lack of peace we're feeling, it's fear that we're feeling. So I, I want you to get this because I don't, I don't want you stuck waiting until you feel completely wonderful about every faith step that God calls you to take into your life. Because every time I have taken a step of faith, it feels like fear first. But in my spirit, in my knowing, I have this peace. It's this peace tension you live in. It's this juxtaposition of, of, man, I'm scared to death to take this. It's going to cost me. There's going to be something to this. I'm afraid God's speaking to me. I feel like whatever you're, God is asking you to do, but inside there's this like, no, but I've prayed and I've sought the word and it's going to make me more like Christ and godly counsel agrees with me. Are y'all with me? Because you'll never take a step of faith and so you'll never advance in your journey of faith. If you're waiting until everything is, makes sense. No, no, there's something God gives you that'll transcend understanding. There's a divine peace that can transcend what logic, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make, no, no, we plan to buy that vacation home. It doesn't make sense to stall that and be sacrificial in our, no, we, no, I, we planned a vacation. It doesn't make to stall that and pause that. To, but I got a knowing. It doesn't mean I don't feel fear. It doesn't mean I don't feel trepidation. That's what faith feels like on the front end. Abraham, I want you to pick up and move to a place I'll show you. That didn't feel like faith. I guarantee you, telling everybody, packing up the U-Haul, where are we going? God's going to show us. We don't know. I said week one, I, I could have the faith to go where, the, where I had a pen on the map. God, drop me a pen, God. But I don't know about just get up and go. No, every, I feel like every step, it's felt a whole lot like fear. I feel my heart racing yeah. when I've made the decision, when I've taken the step. But in my spirit, in that deep place of me that, and of you, that, that God place of you, now there's a, there's a peace. There's a peace. So don't mistake the fear you will feel when you take steps of faith with a lack of peace. Feel the fear. Step out in faith anyways. In hindsight, it feels like crazy. In hindsight, it, in foresight, I mean, it feels crazy. It feels radical. It feels like I've lost my mind. In hindsight is when we call it faith. We don't usually call it faith on the front end. 
And definitely sometimes the people around you don't call it faith on the front end. Abraham, have you lost your ever loving mind? Thousands of years later, man of faith. What a great man of faith. Now it feels like a whole lot of fear on the front end. Looks like faith on the back end. And so do I have peace? Number five, one more question is, does it stretch me? God's so committed to your conformity, not your comfort. He's never going to leave you where you are. And he's never going to leave you at the level you are. He's constantly moving you from glory to glory, from victory to victory, from faith to faith. Are you following me? And the only way you grow and the only way you move forward and the only way you get stronger is by stretching. So I, I was uh, watching this. I got in the, um, the bowels of YouTube the other day. <laughs> Come on, somebody. How many of you ever, you started out just watching the press conference from the football game. That's me. And then the next thing you know, you're in the deep depths of, of uh, the, the tube. So I'm on it the other day and I, this video pops up and I don't know why it popped up for me. I'm sure the algorithm gods were watching me and listening to everything I say and reading my mind in my sleep. How many of you ever feel like that when you pull up something and you're like, I didn't even say that out loud, did I? <laughs> so true. So I was, uh, I was watching this uh, video on posture because I feel like the older I get, the more my posture is bad. And so I'm constantly aware of my posture because I, I don't, I don't want to end up like this, you know. And so I'm constantly like in my posture. So this video was this physical therapist and he had a million views. So I was like, okay, maybe he's got something to do. Because obviously if a lot of people watch it, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm watching this posture video and he's giving all these exercises. And he, and he says this, he goes, part of the reason you do, because you know, I'm at a computer a lot or I'm reading or I'm, at, I'm just sitting a lot, is that um, your muscles will actually uh, not just get weaker, but shorten is that they shorten. And so that's what happens is your chest muscles pull. And so he had these odd exercises and strength building things and stretches. And so um, the other morning I'm, I'm in the bathroom and I'm, I'm standing there in the mirror doing this because <laughs> it's supposed to stretch your neck muscles and do this. And Tammy's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm elongating my muscles. <laughs> because if you stretch them and exercise them enough, they will actually get longer. And so you, you don't feel the pull, your posture gets back and I'm in the door frame doing this, leaning in and I'm elongating. I'm not getting huge, but I'm elongating. <laughs> you always me I'm elongating the muscles. I was thinking about this. If you don't use your faith, that muscle will get shorter. It gets shorter and shorter. And so God will never leave you where you are because he's constantly wanting to grow faith. He's wanting to elongate that muscle. And so he's going to go, no, no, I want you to stretch that out a little bit. Oh, I know you gave last year, but I want to, I, I'm going to stretch you a little bit more. Well, God, haven't I done enough? No, no, no. Because your faith isn't where he wants it to be. Because he's committed to your conformity to the image of his son, Jesus. So he's going to stretch you. This is why Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Why? Because God is, he, he's, He's like, no, I'm stretching you. Why? Because who you are is not who I designed you to be. Where you are is not where I'm going to finally take you to. But we got a journey to go on where I'm stretching you. And he will use things like decisions in your life. He'll use things like a preacher going, no, I want you to bring a sacrificial gift to God at the end of the year. And God goes, I'm going to use that to elongate that muscle. I don't want atrophy to set in your faith. I don't want your faith to shrink. I don't want that muscle to get weak. I don't want you to be hunched over in your faith. No, I want you to have posture strong. I want those shoulders back. I want to grow your faith. I want to stretch you. Why? Because without faith, you can't please him. So he's committed to your faith growing. And anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists. And that he rewards those who seek him, diligently seek him. So what happens? He doesn't just stretch you to bring you to a snapping point. He stretches you because in the stretching, he can more reward you. 
Because he rewards those who diligently seek him. So what am I got to do? Here's what you got to do. Here's what I'm going to challenge you to. Three things. Are you with me? Say amen. Amen. I'm going to give them to you fast. So think fast, write fast, hear fast. Three things that I want to challenge you to do every day over the next month as we lead into December the 11th. It's going to be a special day. Three things I want you to do. Number one is this. I want you to tune in to God every day. Talking about the shepherd again, John 10 says when he gets them all out, he leads them and they follow because they are familiar with his voice. I'm going to open that word every single day. Well, it may not be speaking to exactly. No, but you know what? The more I read the word of God, the more I'm attuned to his voice. Out of all those kids, that's Abigail. Why? Because I listen to that voice every day of my life. Every day for the last six years, it started out as a little cry and, and then it turned into little syllables and then it turned into words and then it turned into full sentences and now it never stops. <laughs> but I hear that voice from the time I wake up till the time that she goes to bed. Are you with me? So when all 200 little kids are going, good morning, Mr. Henderson, I know that voice because I tune into it every day. Can I tell you something? You won't know the voice of God unless you're tuning into it. Every single day. Number two, I tune out things that oppose God. I can't pick out your kid's voice because I haven't tuned into your kid's voice. Are you following me? And if you won't tune in to what the world is saying, maybe for the next month you would delete social media and you'd delete your Fox app and your CNN app and everything that you possibly can. And you'd go, you know, God, I'm just going to tune into your voice for these next four weeks. I'm going to tune everything else out. Everything that doesn't bring me closer to you. Everything that fills my mind with things that would put doubt and fear and negativity. And I'm just going to tune it out. Next four weeks, I'm going to tune it out. I'm not saying the rest of your life. Maybe you should. I'm just saying next four weeks, I'm going to tune it out. Why? Because John 10, 5, they won't follow a stranger's voice but they'll scatter because they aren't used to the sound of it. How good would it be in your life to get to your life where you're not even used to the sound of other voices? How good would it be to block it out for the next month and then if you put it back in the next week to go, I don't even know that sound anymore. I don't even know that fear sound anymore. I don't even know that negativity sound anymore. I don't even know that critical spirit sound anymore. It just doesn't sit right with me. I gotta run away from that because I'm so tuned in to the voice of the Father. I don't even know that sound. I'm going to tune out what opposes God. And then number three, I'm going to take steps toward what God has spoken. Because remember, faith isn't knowing it. Faith is moving on it. Faith isn't just hearing it. Faith is taking action on it. It says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. They follow me. So I want you to hear the voice of God. I want you to know his voice in every area of your life. Why? Because he's leading you in the right direction. The psalmist said that he leads you by green pastures and still waters. Doesn't lead you into chaos. Doesn't lead you into pain. He leads you by still waters, green pastures. But you can't go there if you don't know his voice. You'll wonder all through your life what you're supposed to do and you will wander in places you were never meant to go because you were not attuned to the voice of the Father. And I'm telling you, just like I knew Abigail's voice, you can know God's voice. It starts with his word. Does it make me more like him? What does God the counsel say? Do I have peace? Is it stretching me? Walk through it and you'll be able to determine, yeah, that was the voice of God. So these next four weeks, you're going to hear his voice. Maybe like you've never heard it before. And then what do you got to do? You got to move forward when you hear it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here today and The voice of the Father is speaking to you about 
this one thing. And it's that he's calling you home. And the voice of the Father is saying it's time to come home. That you've run from God long enough. You've tried to do life on your own long enough. And the voice of the great shepherd is saying, no. You've followed a stranger's voice. Come back. Come to me. The invitation of the shepherd isn't to religion, it's to relationship. See, the Bible says that we've all sinned, we've all fallen short, we've all been separated from God, but it says the gift of God. The gift of God is the eternal life, and it's found only in Jesus. It's not found in your best effort, your good works, or your church membership, or your church attendance. It's found by faith alone in what Jesus has done for you. And the the good shepherd, Jesus, today is inviting you to come into relationship with him. In just a moment, we're going to pray together. And the prayer is just us confessing our faith in him. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord then you'll be saved. What does that mean? That means your sins will be forgiven. Your eternity will be secure. And you'll begin a journey of knowing God. And so today I want to invite you to pray that. In just a moment, we're going to pray. Before we do, I'm going to know who I'm praying with at every campus. No one looking around, just myself, your campus pastor. And we'll count to three. When I count to three, I just want you to shoot your hand up high enough, long enough for us to see. No one's going to come to you. No one's going to embarrass you. No one would point you out. It's between you and God. But I just think this is your act of faith. You shooting your hand up. It's a sign of faith. It's saying, yes, that's me, God. And maybe you're here and you've walked away and you need to come back to God. This moment's for you too. But you just shoot your hand up on three. One, two, three. Just shoot them up high enough, long enough for us to see. High enough, long enough for us to see. Church, will you pray this with me? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just pray it out loud. Say, Jesus, I need you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. Today I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you for a brand new beginning. In Jesus' name, everybody said a big amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for those who just made that decision. Hey, we hope today's message spoke to your situation and was helpful to your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're posting new content every week. And also, if you'd like to partner with us financially, you can click the link below. You know, it's thanks to the generosity of people like you that we're able to meet the needs of people all over the world. So thank you for making a difference and helping deliver this message to the people that need it most. And thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you soon.